Uh, today we have uh, Pablo Pierre Valle, he's a member of our group, Queen Folk, and it was a pleasure to collaborate with him at, and with Juanjo in this study of uh, marginal optimization. And Pablo is going to present a recent work where he has been exploring uh, different methods and uh, different uh, schemes for improving this, this variational optimization and seeing what it works or not. Uh, Pablo, please, so, if you want. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Diego, for the introduction. Uh, I'm very excited today because, well, as Diego said, I'm going to talk to you about uh, our last paper, our last preprint, which is already available on, arch on archive, and which is entitled Quantum Variational Optimization, the Role of Entanglement and Problem Hardness. And as Diego said, this work is a collaboration with him and Juan Jose Garcia Ripoll. Just to give you a first general idea about the content of the paper, in the last few years, the variational approach uh, has emerged as a promising framework for exploiting the computational power of near-term quantum devices. And nevertheless, regarding these algorithms, many questions remain open, and in this paper, we examine the performance of quantum variational optimization to solve a collection of specific combinatorial optimization problems. We explore how the structure of the variational quantum circuit and the structure of the optimization problem may affect several aspects of the optimization, such as the success rates, the convergence speeds, or the behavior of the algorithm in different scenarios. So, well, here is the outline of the talk. As people in the audience come from different backgrounds, I will try to explain everything almost from the scratch. I will try, I will start explaining what are the problems that we are going to solve, in which problem we are going to apply the versional technique. These problems are the so-called uh, Kubo problems. I will, explain, uh, I will explain what is the meaning of Kubo. Then I will introduce the specific algorithms uh, we will focus on, which is the variational quantum agent solver, BQE. And we will see the components of the algorithm that we analyze in the manuscript. And then I'll move on to the results. We will see the plots that we have obtained and the conclusions that we can extract for them, from them. And finally, I will summarize the main results. And I will give you some takeaway points of the talk and the paper. So, OK, let's jump in. Uh, the variational approach has broad applications in the study of complex quantum systems, such as in quantum chemistry. But there is also ongoing research on its applications to NP-hard combinatorial optimization problems, such as those uh, represented by Kubo formulas. Um, the meaning of Kubo is quadratic and constraints binary optimization because the objective is to maximize or minimize our cost functions, in this case E, that involves at most products of binary variables as well as we can see here in this equation, x is an array of, uh, of n uh, zeros and ones, and q is a matrix that represents the interactions between the variables. Um, to find the values which optimize these functions is an NP hat problem in which we have two to n possible answers. Uh, however, the study of Kubo problems is worth it because there is a broader spectrum of combinatorial optimization problems that can be represented as cool. Mm, I think that it can be convenient uh, to see cool problems as the representation of an undirected graph with n vertices, where each vertex uh, represents a binary variable. Mm, the classical solutions of Kubo corresponds to label each vertex with 0 or 1, so that the cross functions of the previous slide is maximized or minimized. The vertices or nodes are connected by uh, undirected edges that have associated weights, which are given by the Q matrix. 
in our numerical experiments, we generated and structured random graphs with networks, which is a Python package. And we classify your problems according to the size of the corresponding graph, which is the same that the number of vertices n, and the density of the graph, which is given by the ratio between the number of edges and the maximum, the maximum number uh, of potential connections. So our core problems can always be mapped to an instant speed model. If we implement the following change of variables, where sigma sub i is the Pauli set matrix acting on the qubit i, we can express the previous functions like this, where this part is a, con is a constant, and the coupling matrix and the um, magnetic fields of the uh, Asian Hamiltonian are given by the Q matrix. So we can say, uh, we can see that maximizing these functions is the same as minimizing the Asian Hamiltonian. So the optimization of the cube of cost functions becomes a search of the minimum energy state of an Asian Hamiltonian for an enqubic system. Where, well, where it qubits uh, represents one vertex of the graph. Okay, so now let's see uh, what is the meaning of BQE, the variational quantum agent solver, which is the algorithm that we will focus on. Uh, BQE is an hybrid, uh, it's an hybrid uh, quantum classical algorithm, which are those that combine the use of quantum and classical computers to solve a, computer, a computational problem. In particular, uh, BQE seeks the minimum agent value and corresponding agent state, a problem, Hamiltonian age, such as the Q models that we have described in the previous slide. Uh, to do so, the algorithms relies on a parameterized family of web functions or ansatz. This ansatz uh, is prepared in a quantum computer through several unitary operations. The real value theta determine how this st uh, state will be constructed. Mm, then, the answer state is used by the uh, quantum computer with a specific theta values, measuring a cross functions that depends on the Hamiltonian of the problem that we are trying to solve. And, well, here, for example, I express in the specification value of the Hamiltonian which is the cost function that is used in the original VQE, but we will see in the following slide that we can use other cost functions that we can think, for example, massive cost functions, so or there are, there are some proposals in, the, in this sense. And the output values of these cost functions are used by a classical optimizer that is run in a classical computer to select new theta values that may give a better results of the cost function. This process is iterated until a convergent rule says that per meters are good enough. If our answer is dense in the Hilbert space, uh, we can find a good approximation of the ground state using this theta that the algorithm, the process, give us as a solution. Unfortunately, sometimes this process ends in a local minimum instead of a global minimum, and there are plenty of questions regarding this, such as which is the most convenient answer, was, uh, what constructions should we use to improve the efficiency, etc. Okay, so now um, we will dive a bit into the specific features of the algorithm that we are going to explore in the paper. First, we'll take a look at the cost function. Uh, the straightforward choice we'll be using, as I said, the expectation value of the Hamiltonian as cost functions is, at the end of the day, 
is the quantity that we are trying to, uh, to minimize. We are trying to approximate the state with minimum energy. This is uh, the choice that appears in the original BT formulation, which well, was introduced in this popular paper. So in an idealized scenario, in which we would know the full weight fractions, we could calculate the expectation value of the problem Hamiltonian like this. At this point, I would also uh, like to highlight an aspect that we should bear in mind. When we compute BQE in a quantum computer, we cannot access the exact distribution of energy P associated with the state that we build. Instead, the energy of the states is approximated by simultaneously measuring all qubits on the Pauli set map basis. So, we measure the state a number of times. For example, here uh, we are saying an, an uppercase k times. We obtain k strings of n values minus 1 or plus 1, which can be translated to a bit of string of zeros and ones. And with that, we calculate the q energy that here we are labeling as ek. By averaging, all these values over the k repetitions, we obtain a stochastic approximations in the limit case or, or infinite number of experimental solves, infinite uh, number of measurements, we get, again, the ideal scenario. In this work, we obtain results from simulations in both an idealized scenario and a realistic scenario with a finite number of experimental measurements. So that uh, we can study how the stochasticity of the cross functions affects the performance of the algorithm. Mm, a problem with BQE is that it regards all outcomes of the measurement process with equal importance, even of larger states uh, that may have energy far away from our goal. Recently, uh, a group for um, IBM. Uh, proposed a variation of BQE that replaces the cost function with a new estimator that is inspired by the conditional value of Riggs um, definition that is applied in finance. And in this plot, we uh, in this plot we have the uh, the whole distribution of energy of a specific state. State instead of averaging the whole range of energies. As the original BQE does, CBAR BQE only averages the lowest row fraction of energy, where rho is a free parameter that in our work we set um, to be the, the, the 10%. In a realistic scenario, this new estimator only works with a fraction of the bit strings that the computer produces, selecting them. To, uh, to be the lowest energy, as uh, we can see here, if we sort the energies, we just select that one that has the lowest value. Um, in our results, we will check that this CIVA BQ it's a very good uh, cost functions compared with the original BQ with the estimation of the whole distribution of energy. Another crucial, uh, another crucial ingredient in all variational algorithms is the choice of the answer. Uh, the choice of gates and the topology of the entangling operations uh, can affect the efficiency of the outcome. This study, in this study, uh, we focus on a set of entangled variational wave functions as originally proposed for the BQE method. These wave functions combine uh, layers of entangling gates, UM here, with real uh, airway rotations, the rotations angles of the airway rotations are what is optimized by the classical optimizer. And in principle, uh, we have as many entangling layers as we want, but of course, it will decrease the accuracy of the quantum computations 
in the next era because we are adding more gates, we are not adding more noise. Uh, in this work, uh, we consider three types of great functions that are created by the action of control set gates. The first set of wire wire rotations is common in all the wave functions, but we will change the entangling in the theory that determines uh, the correlation structure of the wave function. Those structures are a linear entanglement, um, where the entangling gates are independent of the structure of the Q problems. Every entangling layer is made up to qubit uh, control set gates, control set gates, which in each qubit, with its neighbor's network qubit, uh, we are taking into account a linear um, quantum processor to, uh, topology. Then we have a compatible entanglement, um, where the entangling gates are chosen to reflect the structure of the qubit. This would be, for example, the example if we were organizing this graph, we apply uh, control set gates between its qubits with the nearest neighbors in the cubogram. So its two vertices uh, are connected by a non-null X in the graph. We will apply the two qubit gate between the corresponding qubits. Uh, however, in the random entanglement case, the entangling gates uh, are applied between random qubits. Although the number of entangling qubits is given by the number of non-null weights of the qubit graph, therefore it's not a full random entanglement, but it's dependent on the density of the problem. To summarize this slide, we have a pattern that is fully independent for the optimization problem, but could be more hardware efficient. Then we have a structure uh, that reflects the structure of the QO problem, of the QO graph. And then we have a more random case. Besides these web functions, in this work, we also explore the performance of fully separable variational states, where we do not apply an entangled unitary. In this answer, uh, we only apply a set of single qubit airway rotations. Note that this is enough to approximate any state of the whole Hilbert space if we choose adequate theta values. This state uh, can be understood as a borderline case of the variational form exposed in the previous slide, in which the number of layers is equal to zero. However, it's an, it's an interesting case because the elimination of the entangling gates makes the state more efficient and more accurate. But it also um, makes the whole version of procedure efficiently simulable in a classical way. In fact, uh, we can regard this family of states uh, as a new type of classical algorithms. In order to study the efficiency of the algorithms, um, we use the algorithms runtime and success as indicator. The algorithm speed is quantified by the number of the cost functions variations needed to convert to an optimal solution, either global or local. Note that the, uh, this is also the number of queries made to the quantum processors, which is the most time consuming step the whole process. Uh, furthermore, uh, the algorithm success is quantified by the probability that the final weight functions, what we call here C out, has a significant overlap with the target state, the ground state of the system, the solution. We consider the algorithm successful whenever the probability is bigger than a fixed cutoff that here we call beta. Beta. Uh, otherwise, it will be considered unsuccessful and S equals zero. And in our results, 
uh, we work with the success rate, which is the average of pace over all the stances of, that we perform. The value of beta uh, is somewhat arbitrary, but in order to be able to obtain the right optimum state with almost 100% of probability, after that 100 measurements, we set beta equal to 0 0.1. What's the meaning of that? It means that if after the Bison optimization process, our final state has an overlap with the correct optimum equal to at least 0 0.1, sampling that state 100 times um, and obtaining 100 data strings will be enough to get at least one time the correct results between those 100 data strings. So, lastly, um, before going to the main results, let me, let me just uh, take a look at the classical method that we use to optimize the variational parameters uh, before our full study of the variational algorithms with been smart these optimizers in a limited set of few problems. Um, the, goal is the, uh, the goal of this work is to perform a neutral benchmark, leaving aside experimental imperfections such as noise or, the connected, or disconnected qubits. And for that reason, uh, we conduct all our numerical experiments using a classical simulator of an ideal quantum computer. So, no noise or disconnected qubits are considered. Another important ingredient in these simulations is whether we are considering a finite number of measurements, what I previously previously called uh, idealized, uh, sorry, realistic scenario, or whether we study the limit of infinite number of measurements, what we have called idealized scenario. In this case, the continuous tension as self tension is fully eliminated. So on the left. We saw the, the success rates and the number of evaluations of this method versus the number of qubits optimized in the limit of an infinite number of measurements, idealist scenario. And on the right, the figure shows similar, result, similar results, but we are emulating uh, 9,000 measurements of a quantum computer per evaluation is the realistic scenario. It's interesting that these figures uh, show a strong uh, contrast in, in the performance of the optimizers. For example, we can see that gra gradient-based optimizers such as uh, SLSQP or BFTS or the limited memory version of BFTS perform very well when we are simulating simulating the, the full weight functions, in this case, even they have performed the other methods. However, these algorithms fail when we are considering a finite number of shots. As we can see here, the success, the success rate goes uh, to zero. Uh, it happens because uh, these algorithms fail when because function is evaluating with some randomness and they become a uh, trap in a local minimum due to an imperfect estimate of the optimal descent duration. On the other hand, gradient free optimizers such as SPSA, Covila, or Nelder Mead of Power perform well even when we, are, we don't know the full web functions and the computations present some randomness. Consequently, in this work, when we, we are working with the full wave fashion simulations, we'll, be use, we'll, we, we'll, we'll use mm, these optimizers, the limited memory version of BFES, but when, when we are working with uh, in the realistic scenario, we will be using the SPSA method. Okay, so now we are going to the results. Uh, I 
in that time going more or less on, on time, a bit late, but well, that's okay. <laughs> um, I'm going to show you the main results that we have obtained. The final results are generally obtained from 1,600 instances of these configurations, and they are shown with 95% uh, confidence intervals. It's not the case of this specific figure, but it's the case of the following figures. Okay, so first we present a comparison between the performance of standard BQE and CBAR BQE. BQE and CBAR BQE. Using an ANSAT with three entangent layers, depth three, and a product state wave functions, depth zero. This figure uh, shows the overlap between the SAT optimized refraction to solution and the uh, sorry the S the SAT optimized wave function, which is C out, and the actual solution of the clear problem, which is the solution. We can see that the standard VQE converts almost always to a classical state, which either coincides with a global minimum when we have uh, an overlap of 1 equal to 1. But uh, um, when it, no, it doesn't convert to a global minimum, it converts to a completely orthogonal state to it. So we have a null overlap. The silver VQ method, on the other hand, converts to quantum superpositions, classical configurations. This makes that the several BQE refractions have a smaller overlap with the global minimum on average, but it really increases uh, the probability of recovering the optimal solutions by repeated measurements. In contrast, when the BQE algorithm fails, we have to restart the optimization process again from a different initial condition because it has a new, uh, it, it has zero overlap. Note that, the, for example, note that the percentage of instances that have a new overlap with the solutions is much smaller using the CBAR BQE. Mm, this result is confirmed in the following plot where we compare the performance of the standard BQE, which is the blue lines, and CBAR BQE. The orange lines. Uh, we here we look. Uh, we can look at the success rates, which is defined by the criteria previously introduced, and the number of evaluation units. In both cases, we see that the performance of silver BQ is much better than or the original the standard BQ. Mm, for that reasons, from now on, all the results uh, were done using the CBAR BQE cross functions instead of the original BQE because it's the best method that we have obtained. Okay, I now saw the results from the study uh, of the influence of correlations in the variational algorithm. Uh, our goal is to understand whether an entanglement structure that imitates the topology, the cube of problems, produces uh, significant advantages. Mm. This figure um, illustrates the performance of C uh, CBAR BQE using one entanglement, one entanglement layer of the three types of entanglement structures that we have presented before. We also present the case with an entanglement that is the case that we label as product state. We computed the success rate and functions evaluations for, for different values of the associated graph density. And we are uh, dealing with problems uh, with 12 vertices, 12 qubits. 
we observe that uh, for small graph densities, a compatible entanglement has a marginal advantage, the success rate and convergence speed. However, as the density of the Kubo graph increases, this advantage disappears. And the success rate is masked or given on perform in some cases by other wave patients, but at a lower uh, numbers of action evaluations. We have repeated uh, the previous study with an increasing number of layers. The following plot illustrates the success rate and the number of evaluations for graphs with an intermediate density on the left column and dense, graph de and dense graphs on the right column. We observe that in both cases, uh, the convergence uh, of the algorithm slows down with the number of layers proportionally to the graph in the number of parameters. Despite this cost, the success rate reaches a plateau with a few layers, and in fact... Uh, I, I cannot hear you. I think uh, the network is cutting down. Maybe we can switch off the cameras to try to improve the bandwidth. Okay, perfect. Um, okay. Now you can hear me better. It's better now? Okay. Good. Um, just in case I, I look at the presentation, so if you have any any question or anything to say, just say uh, unmute, unmute you because I'm looking at the presentation and I'm not looking at the chat. So just in case. Okay. Um, Uh, let's go on. Uh, I was saying uh, that uh, the success rate, despite increasing the cost, the success rate uh, reach, uh, reaches a plateau with a few layers. And in fact, uh, that is especially prominent at smaller densities. For example, we can see here that we use uh, the compatible entanglement, the success rate saturates. Uh, using just one layer. After that, increasing the number of layers uh, doesn't imply an increase, an increase uh, in the success rate. Mm. Until now, uh, our study has focused on exact simulations of the rational wave functions, computing the SAT expectation values or the SAT uh, CBAR values. But we will now consider a realistic scenario uh, with a finite number of experimental sorts uh, for each observable. In this case, uh, we no longer compute the SAT CBAR weekly cross functions, but we compute the random estimator. And the results are summarizing plots uh, for simulations using just uh, one layer of entangled gates or zero layers if we are using the product state. Plots uh, A and C imitate earlier plots, but now we are using 3,000 and 9,000 measurements, while plots B and D uh, focus on the study of the variation that uh, that we had in the performance with an increasing number of sorts. Uh, we have we can extract uh, several conclusions. For example, we see uh, that the compatible entanglement is the most successful answer when a sufficient number of sorts is available. We also can see that this advantage uh, clearly vanishes when we consider our next scenario with a finite number of measurements uh, where the cost functions 
made it with randomness, you can see here. For example, this is the case with less sorts that we have considered. And we can also see that the slowdown that is produced in convergence when we increase the graph density is aggregated when the algorithm has incomplete information. For example, we can see here that in the case that with 3,000 sorts, compatible entanglement uh, has to do a bunch of evaluations when we are considering uh, very dense graphs. And not the case when we are using the full web functions, which is the dotted, uh, the dotted uh, line. The product state is a bit different, but I will talk uh, more about this case later in the last slides. Okay, so at this point, uh, we have discussed the efficiency of optimizing group problems according to a characteristic of the personal algorithm, such as the cost functions or the answers. Now, uh, we analyze the problem from a different point of view. We will try to get some insight uh, into how the specific uh, properties of each queue of problems affect the hardness of the optimizations in terms of success rates and speed of convergence. So, what is um, a hard problem? For us, it is one for which the variational algorithms requires uh, much time to convert, but it still obtains a low success rate. Optimization algorithms, as I think that I said before, typically fail because the answers get trapped in a local minimum that is different from the global minimum we seek. Uh, therefore, we define a matrix that characterizes the structure of low energy excitations because we, we expect that this phenomenon will be more likely when there are states that are close to the optimum regarding, regarding their energies but which are very really different regarding their bits. Uh, for that, we use uh, the Hamming distance definitions between two bit strings. And we will compute the Hamming distance between the ground state of the system and its first excited state. Let me recall that the Hamming distance between two strings is equal to the percentage of bits that are referenced. For example, in this case, we have uh, two four-bit strings, and the Hamming distance is just one half because they have two different bits. Okay, so we have correlated the performance of the rational quantum optimizers to the minimum Hamming distance between the ground state space of the queue of problem and its first citations. In this plot, uh, the versional algorithm was simulated using the full wave function. We can observe that these results show a strong correlation between the Hamming distance from the fundamental state to the first accepted state and the difficulty of the algorithm to solve uh, the optimization problem, both in terms of success rate and speed of convergence of number or number of evaluations, which is the same. And we can also see that it holds for all types of variational web functions, which is also interesting. Uh, we have repeated the study with a finite number of measurements, um, and we can check that the strong correlations are also noticeable here. More harm in distance imply less uh, success rates and more uh, cost functions evaluations. We can see, for example, in this case, that when we are using 9,000 uh, 9, uh, shots measurements, the problems with lowest harness have approximate uh, a 50% more success than the hardest distances. Okay, so well, um, mm, from the previous plots, we can also compute the density of the graph 
impacts the performance of the Bayesian algorithms, and therefore it could uh, be used as a measurement of hardness. And not so, uh, not so, it's not so good um, metric at the Hamming distance, but, but it could also be used. But I think that I may skip uh, this small part because I, uh, because I don't want to do it too long and I want to talk about another interesting point. That is this one. Um, so uh, I'll move on. I'll move to this part. This is the last part for the results. Um, so far, we have considering to extract conclusions but, uh, from the variation uh, the variation of wave functions with one entangling layer, and also in the special case in which we eliminate all entanglement and work with prior state. But we haven't pointed out the difference in performance between them. And we think that it's important to do a careful comparison between both situations, because only the cases with entanglement would show an advantage of using the quantum computer. Indeed, using product state with C bar of full degree, it doesn't matter, can be regard, regarded uh, as a new classical optimization algorithm. At a glance, for example, in Spiegel's and um, previous plots, we observe a slight improvement in the success rate of BQE when we are using some entangling operations. This success uh, comes with two codes. First, uh, we need to use uh, a quantum computer, which it involves a non negligible overhead. And furthermore, the increase of number and increased uh, number of parameters in the variational answer leads to a larger number of function evaluations and slower optimization. However, the advantage of entangled states decreases and even disappears when we consider the statistical errors induced by a finite number of quantum measurements. Uh, we can see it in, a plot, in the plot A, but it's more clear if we see uh, the plot B. For example, we see that a decrease in the number of samples reduce the success, the success gap to a point where at 3,000 shots, the product state can outperform other methods. Um, well, we have a similar simula uh, situation if we regard the number of evaluations. We therefore conclude that the use of product state variational form is advent uh, so advantages when we are limited in the precisions with which we can estimate the cost of action. Okay, we, uh, we I, I almost finished. I would like to point out that uh, what is the role of entanglement in different hardware regimes, as it's shown in this table. In the table, we show the performance of the product state and entangled state ANSATs for three hardware regimes. And we also show it in uh, using a different number of sorts. In a specific, in this table, displays the success rates and the average number of evaluation of the cost functions as we are at we are doing in all the presentation. Uh, for inspecting this table and previous plots, we conclude that entanglement provides a moderate, a moderate advantage in success rates, uh, ranging from 10% at these problems up to 4-5% for hard problems, but always in the realistic case. However, this advantage is artificial because we can always simulate the product state case in the full wave function case, achieving 25% to 41% higher success rate. With that, to an order of magnitude, reductions in the number of evaluations. So, well, that was all. I, I know that I have presented um, plenty of informations, 
So just let me conclude with a summary of our main results. Uh, and we some important points and take away that I would like to highlight from the paper and from the presentation. In this work, we have studied the depreciation of two problems using the original and SIVA formulations of the BQ algorithm. Our works corroborate the advantage of using a SIVA cost functions over conventional averages. And it's interesting that we also verify that adapting the structure and time operations to the topology of the problem is marginally advantageous. This is the case of the compatible entanglement, which was uh, plot with blue lines in most of the slices of the slide. Our, our study also finds a correlation between the practical hardness of a problem and a metric that, cat that characterizes Characterizes the structure of low energy dissipations. That metric is the Hamming distance between the ground state and the first excited state. Um, we, um, a very interesting takeaway is that a CBAR cost with product state answers provide a very good classical optimization method. And maybe it's not useful in all. Uh, the regions, but we have seen that in some cases it can produce a very good performance compared with the uh, entangling answers. And well, the result illustrates the possibilities that the quantum expired alternatives can bring to the field of classical optimization in the near term as a theater work. So, well, thank you very much. Uh, that's was all that I wanted to say. Thank you, Pablo. So, um, are there any questions? Yes, so I have a uh, next. Uh, so like the, the cubo problem that you are solving, so you are taking some random graph or like and then classifying it as a function of the density of the density of Yes, well, no, uh, we, are, we are generating that graphs uh, taking into account their density. Oh, okay. uh, yes. For example, we want to, to have a graph with X density and we generate, we generate it randomly, but taking into account the size and the density that we want. Yes. Uh, but yes. then you are, so you are not taking, like, thinking about any particular problem, no? like, no. Okay. So it's no. Really, okay. Yes. Yeah, not that way. It's, it generalizes that. Yes. It just to see the, the general behavior of the algorithm with the kind of problems, but no, yes, it, it could be applied. I think. And well, also, like the like the conclusion, like I mean, the end product states are so good. Uh, so does it mean that in the end, so you don't need a like a quantum computer, no? Or, uh, well, that's that. Is the conclusion? I mean, it's good kind of the, the final. Yes, yeah, but yes. Maybe it's like I wouldn't say it's so so clear, no, because it's maybe just a case of a, it's a case of a study. But um, well, it's like we see that it could be. Uh, it's, I think that it would be needed uh, more investigation in this sense. I think that is the that is the look that we that is the conclusion that we want to do to to get sorry more than to, that more more than saying that. That that is absolutely true. But also, like this cubo in the end, so you are solving a basic model that I mean, it's like a sigma set, sigma c, sigma c interactions, plus sigma c field. Like I mean, would it be like if you choose like a term like you have a sigma x or like a quantum mode version, let's say? So would, then would it be like in, the, in that case probably entanglement then is more relevant, no? Or or is it the same? Mm. Actually, uh, actually, I don't know. Maybe it's right, but depending with the, I guess that with the cubic format that we are dealing, uh, we 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 do not find that kind of term. So yeah, maybe I, the senior guy says it once more. I mean, if you put quantum correlations in the Hamiltonian, mm -hmm. then you have entangled ground states. Yeah. 
You can exactly. So, so then this, this is not a good description. It's, so yeah. in the end, so you saw, I mean, Hubo, okay, so it's, I mean, this conclusion is more for the Hubo programs, no? It's for classical optimization problems in this framework of quantum optimization, which is to use quantum computers for classical problems. Mm -hmm. So you are, killing the, you are killing the field? Not necessarily. <laughs> there may be other algorithms. There may be other algorithms <laughs> based on wow, wow, or other, uh, other methods that we do not yet know. But what it shows is that what we have so far, it doesn't justify very big claims. But wow, wow, in the end, it's just putting a different answer. You, know, you are putting a. We haven't considered that one here. And there may be okay, other answers. Is, I, mean, they, I mean, but this is still a variational answer. But yes, I mean, have this, you have this alternating kind of way of building the answer, you know, or? Yeah, Yes, it's. Yeah. Yes, well, it's, it's quite different, I would say. So, wow, wow is um, a bit more sophisticated somehow in the sense that you have. The, the answer itself contains information from the from the solution of the problem. Sure, sure. But I mean, the money. So I mean, I would say uh, what we are obtaining here for BQ does not necessarily uh, relate to Kuwa. Mm -hmm. It does not say uh, that any any quantum variational answer is is uh, is going to be it does not require entanglement. Okay, but it is a, it's, it's not a, it's a very important example because a lot of effort is, is focused on that. No, I know. So a little bit easier to, uh, to carry out the classical optimization, which is a bit, can be a bit difficult with Kuawa in the sense that, uh, I mean, you find, you find numerically that it's, sometimes it's difficult to, to converge with Kuawa. So it's more difficult, I would say. But anyways, I see. No, it's interesting. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, yeah, so in here, yeah, for instance, the, these product state simulations, they are very close to this spin vector Monte Carlo that people have been used to compare with quantum annealing. And we know that it performs the asymptotics is, is worse than the one that you get with quantum annealing, either in the machine or, or simulated with quantum Monte Carlo. So there may be other alternatives in the quantum computer, mm -hmm. the quantum circuit work that get you closer to the scaling that you would see in quantum annealing, for instance. That's one thing that we could see probably. What probably people don't expect is that you could do, you could get exponential gains with quantum computers. That that, that type of claim is really not. not yes, but I thought that at most you could get like quadratic, you know, like, like but, uh, but in the end, they have, I don't know. They have some talks of Troyer, he says this is kind of not enough no, to get like to make yeah. it useful for practical so you need super cool over something beyond quadratic speed also. Yes. Mm -hmm. so, so, far, so far, let's say from this this uh, I mean it's very sex this is systematic study you made is like there is no speed up, no? Or like No, not really. Like, mm, no. Interesting. No, it's super interesting. Actually, if you look at the number of evaluations, the product state evaluations are so low that you can afford to do more yeah. with the product state to come up to the same uh, standards as with the entangled state. I, see. I think it's also interesting because uh, it suggests that there may be other classical methods of uh, optimization and sampling that we have not yet explored that could be useful for these kind of applications. So. I think it may be just a first step towards this, this kind of studies. Very nice. Thank, Thank you, Pablo. You made a very good presentation. <laughs> Thank you very much. Very exhaustive uh, study, you know, like as well. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Maybe a, a bit long, I don't know, but... <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I would like to ask something. Um, well, yeah, um, congratulations for the talk, it was very nice. Um, so I, you already explained it, but I don't think I understood it completely. The, the part of how you measure the success 
on the overlap of the of the outcome state and that beta. Could you explain that a bit more in detail? Yeah, yes, of course. Um, I, I am going to that slide. So this is what here, right? Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, when okay, um, when when you have an state, for example, um, our goal is to find the optimal state, no, of the of the system. So that is the uh, a, um, that state will be classical because we are solving a classical problem. So we are trying to find just a bit of string, right? Okay. Or, or, or values uh, zero and one. Okay. So if, for example, the final state C out is a superposition of several classical states, but our, uh, but the ground state that we are looking, that is the solution, has an overlap, for example, 0 0.2, it means that we have a, pro a 0 0.2 probability to get uh, the right solutions, right? Once you measure. Sorry? Once you measure, you have that probability yes. of uh, projecting onto that state, okay? Yes. So, if we get uh, a probability overlap larger than 0 0.1, we will get that state at least one time with almost 100% of probability after just uh, 100 measurements. That's a very easy formula that if you put the and the, the number of times that you measure, you can find what's the probability that you get having a, a specific overlap. I don't know, you, because we don't need uh, to have an overlap equal to, to 100%, because it's very easy to, to measure the state 100, miss, uh, 100 times or even 1,000 times. That's not very time consuming. So we don't need an overlap equal to, to 100%. We just need a small overlap that needs the cutoff that we have to pick, uh, that we have to fix. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. And, and related to that, I think that another important takeaway is that if you do if you use the energy uh, with ordinary BQE, you can get 0% overlap. So typically you get either 100% or 0%. Yeah. But if you use CBAR, you can get a residual, small but still useful, overlap with the right solution. Because you are pushing the, 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 the amplitude of the wave function towards low energy. And that's something that we didn't expect, but I think it's a very nice takeaway because it tells you that by changing the cost function, you radically change the properties of convergence of the method. Yes, yes that's true. And that, we can see it in this figure. Yes, yes, for example, I think that you can understand that better, Guillermo, looking at this, at this plot. Because, for example, our beta is set, is set in 0.1. So we are saying that all these states that that are over 0 0.1 are okay, you know. But for example, in the BQ case, case as Juan Jo is saying, it doesn't matter if we choose 0 0.1 or 0 0.9 because we are because all the all the successful states. Uh, has a full overlap with the government state. Okay, so uh, thank you again, Pablo. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much.